This team of astronauts is carrying a nuclear bomb to the sun in order to jumpstart it, but they are about to face some difficult choices along the way, the year is 2057, and the sun is dimming, causing freezing temperatures on Earth. Seven years prior to this, a mission named Icarus was sent to restart the sun, but the ship mysteriously went missing. Now, the same mission is being attempted by the crew of Icarus 2. They are carrying a stellar bomb the size of Manhattan, with the aim to detonate it on the surface of the sun to restart the dying star. The entire ship of Icarus 2 is built behind a ginormous shield that protects it from the sun's heat and light. On board the Icarus 2 are eight astronauts, Kappa, who designed and operates the stellar bomb, Canada, the captain, Cyril, the psychologist, Mace, Corazon, Cassie, Trey, and Harvey. Cyril is sitting in the observation room of the ship, looking at the sun through a window that filters out the sun's light. He asks the ship's AI named Icarus to reduce the filter so he can observe greater sunlight. Icarus shows him just 3.1% of the sun's full might, and it is already more than he can bear. He's fascinated by it. Next, the entire crew is having dinner together when Canada reveals that sometime within the next 24 hours, they will reach the dead zone, which means that they will lose all communications with Earth. They weren't expecting this until next week. Canada says that if anyone wants to send out final messages back to Earth, they should do it now. Kappa goes in first and records a message for his family, where he mentions that by the time they get this message, he will be near the sun. Meanwhile, Corazon looks after the ship's greenhouse and reports to Canada that they are producing excess oxygen, which means they will have enough for the return journey. Corazon can tell that Canada is thinking about Icarus 1, and she says they have no idea what caused that mission's failure, but it definitely wasn't a lack of oxygen. A fight breaks out between Kappa and Mace because Kappa took too long to send his message, and the solar wind has now picked up, so they can't send out any more messages. Due to his outburst, Mace has to take a session with Cyril, and Cyril prescribes him with two hours in the Earth room, which is a room that creates earthly environments for the astronauts. Afterward, Mace gives a poorly executed apology to Kappa. Cassie announces to the rest of the crew that they are going to see Mercury passing in front of the sun, and everyone excitedly gathers in the observation room to watch. Afterward, Harvey hears a strange signal and gathers everyone. He unveils that it's the distress signal of Icarus 2, reaching them now due to the iron content of Venus acting like an antenna. They examine the signal's location, realizing the ship is close to Venus and only a few thousand miles off their trajectory. The crew debates the possibility of the other crew's survival, but Mace dismisses it, emphasizing the mission's importance. Cyril raises concerns about the untested mission, but going to Icarus 2 would provide a second stellar bomb for a retry. Canada suggests a vote, but Kappa, the most informed, admits uncertainty about the bomb reaching the sun surface. Despite the risks, they agree to go after Icarus to Nex. An alarm rings, and Trey admits he miscalculated the new trajectory, forgetting to adjust the shield's angle. Canada reassures them, revealing only four shield sectors are offline, and they need to manually reset them outside. Canada, Mace, and Kappa, clad in metallic gold spacesuits, venture out. Cassie rotates the shield to shield them from the sun. As they work, loud noises occur, attributed to the shield cooling and contracting. Meanwhile, Trey, inside the ship, remains distressed over his mistake. Kappa and Canada successfully reach the shield, resetting the first damaged sector. Despite the crew's initial excitement, a rotating tower reflects sunlight onto the greenhouse, causing a dangerous fire. In a bid to save the mission, Icarus rotates the shield, but Cassie opposes, emphasizing the mission's importance over individual lives. Canada supports Cassie, asserting the mission's priority. Corazon mourns the loss of the greenhouse, with one sector left to reset, Canada instructs Kappa to return to the ship. Closing it just in time, Canada faces the full force of the sun. Trey is sedated due to suicide risk, and the greenhouse destruction is then with insufficient oxygen. Harvey, the new captain, reveals that going to Icarus 1 is their only hope. Corazon, Cassie, and Mace discuss sacrificing three members for the mission. Cassie, scared, confides in Kappa who talks passionately about creating a star within a star with the stellar bomb, finding beauty in it. They detach from the shield, docking with Icarus 1, and the team begins searching the ship. Kappa discovers that the stellar bomb is still functional, 
Harvey finds the greenhouse has been growing this whole time, and Sel finds there is food and running water on the ship. However, Mace finds that, for some reason, the ship's flight systems have been disabled. He discovers a video message in the ship's files from Captain Pimbacker, who speaks like a religious maniac, claiming it is humanity's time to die as decided by God, stating the Icarus One crew is in abandoning their mission. Mace discovers that the ship's mainframe has a coolant failure, meaning the ship can never fly again. Their trip was a waste. Cyril finds the bodies of the Icarus One crew in the observation room. Assuming they were burned due to the filter allowing all the sunlight inside, he suggests the filter is probably fully open, and the only reason there isn't sunlight in the room is that they are behind the shield of Icarus. 2. Just then, there is an unknown accident, and Icarus does starts floating away from Icarus 1. Mace and the gang rush back to the airlock, but Cassie reveals that somehow the airlock has been destroyed, and they cannot dock again. Mace finds a spacesuit inside Icarus 1, and says Kappa is going to wear it and go back to Icarus 2. Harvey objects, asking why only Kappa gets to live, and Mace says it's because Kappa is the only one who knows how to operate the bomb. Harvey gets selfish, stating he's the captain, so he should get to live. Mace comes up with a plan, suggesting they line up the two ships, so when they open the door, the vacuum sucks all of them at full speed into Icarus 2. Corazon warns him that the temperature in space is freezing, and even a brief journey without suits will nearly kill them. Still, Mace says it's the best plan they have. Cyril reveals that since there is no computer on the Icarus one, someone has to stay behind and manually open the door. Harvey is worried they all want him to stay, but Searl volunteers for the job. Harvey, Kappa, and Mace line up at the door, and Searl opens the hatch. Harvey hits the door on the way out, and his trajectory gets messed up. He flies out into space, freezes, and dies. Meanwhile, Mace and Kappa make it to the ship. Mace has cold burns on several parts of his body, but he lives. Cyril enters the observation room of Icarus 1, where the full force of sunlight enters. After, Icarus 2 moves. He gets engulfed in it and dies. Back in Icarus 2, Mace, Cassie, Kappa, and Corazon discuss that the airlock didn't get destroyed on accident, someone broke it. They all suspect Trey, since Trey is a risk, and his death would also free up oxygen for them to complete the mission. They all vote on killing him. Kappa, Corazon, and Mace vote in favor, while Cassie votes against it. She's horrified as Mace prepares to kill Trey. Mace grabs a knife and arrives to kill Trey, but finds that he has already committed suicide. Mace blames Kappa for everything that has happened, because it was Kappa's decision to detour to Icarus 1. Kappa is outraged, and the two fight. But they can't fight for long, because there isn't much oxygen on the ship, and they run out of breath. Later, Kappa is working when Icarus informs him that there are five people on the ship, and one is unknown. Icarus says the unknown person is in the observation room. Kappa arrives there to find a burnt-up pinbacker who is somehow still alive. He once again talks about Judgment Day like a religious lunatic, and says that he is going to be the last person alive to speak to God when Judgment Day comes. He attacks Kappa with a knife in the chest. Kappa runs, and Pinbacker follows him throughout the ship. Kappa finds a compartment and seals himself in, but Pinbacker locks him from the outside, trapping him in the compartment. Kappa realizes that it was Pinbacker that destroyed the airlock. Pinbacker goes to the mainframe of the ship and removes it from the coolant, just like he probably did with Icarus 1. The ship begins to power down as a result. Corazon finds a baby plant still alive in the greenhouse, and tries to call Mace to give him the good news. But Pinback arrives and stabs him in the back. Mace reaches the main computer, powers it up with a portable battery, and communicates with Kappa through a suit. Kappa informs Mace about Pinbacker, revealing the mainframe is out of coolant, with no power. Mace manually enters the freezing coolant to lower the mainframe. Meanwhile, Cassie wakes up, sensing someone nearby. She sneaks away, but Pinbacker spots her, leading to a chase. Cassie runs into the bomb chamber. Mace, freezing, tells Kappa the computer may not come back online, so he must manually steer the bomb into the sun. Attempting to lower the mainframe into the coolant, Mace's leg gets stuck, and he freezes to death. Kappa, using the suit's heating tool, breaks free, detaches the shield and bomb, and leaps onto the bomb before it drifts too far. In the bomb chamber, Cassie and Kappa fight Pinbacker. 
managing to escape. Kappa reaches the bomb's control panel, sets it off, and the spectacle unfolds, back on Earth. Kappa's family receives his last message, anticipating the sun shining brighter as a sign of his success. As they look up, the sunlight increases, the end. Thank you for watching, be sure to like our channel, and subscribe for more content. Let us know which movie you'd like us to recap next.